Hi everybody, so this is the supplies that you're going to need to make the card holders. Uh, you will need two pieces of fabric, so I have just a couple pieces of scrap fabric here. You will need a couple pieces of batting, again it's just some scrap batting that I have. Uh, you will need two CDs, and these are just some old ones that we don't use anymore. You'll need two buttons, a pair of scissors, uh, I'm going to use my seam ripper little point to kind of score these CDs just because and I'm to cut my circles I'm going to use my circle cutter and my little rotary cutter and of course you'll need needle and thread so let's get started so the first thing I'm going to do is kind of move some of this stuff out of the way and just because there's different um, I'm using just some old CDs this is an old game. We don't have a CD player anymore um, on my laptop or on my computer. So I'm just going to take my seam ripper and just gouge so that there's no way that anybody could use this CD. It's not going to play anymore. So that's the only reason I had the seam ripper. I'm going to move those to the side and I'm going to bring in my fabric. Now you want two circles that are approximately one inch bigger than your CD. So your C my CD is about four and a half, four and three quarters inches. I'm just gonna take and I'm gonna cut a six inch circle. So all I'm gonna do with mine is just to fold it over and put my um, circle cutter on there. If you don't have a circle cutter, just go onto the back side, take your CD and take some sort of a a felt or something. You're not going to see this so it's not going to matter. And just draw a circle approximately one inch bigger than the CD. Okay, but like I said, I'm going to use my circle cutter. So I'm just going to lay this out here. And on my circle cutter there's a solid line and a dotted line. The dotted line is to make a half circle and the solid line is to make um, a full circle. So I'm just going to put my solid line right on the fold. And this is my six, in six inch line right here. So I'm just making sure that I have enough room to cut it out. And then I'm just gonna take my cutter and voila, just like that. And of course there's a little piece caught and another one. There we go. So I'm just going to close up my blade and set that aside. So now I have two circles cut out ready to go. The next thing you're going to need to do is to take your CD and trace a circle again with your whatever type of pen and trace a circle and we want the batting to be the exact same size as the CD. So now I'm just cutting this out with a pair of scissors. all the way around. There we go. And I had two of my pieces of batting layered, so I now have two pieces. So our next step is to take our material, and I have just a, a some thread here, and I tied a knot. I have a double strand. And we're just going to do like a running stitch all the way around. So a running stitch is just going in and taking little bites of the material about a quarter of an inch from the edge of the, of the material. What, we're, what this is going to allow us to do is when we're ready, we can pull on the strings and it will gather this together. Okay, so I'm just going to continue all the way around. And you don't want your stitches real big in between. Again, maybe about a quarter of an inch around there. And just keep going all the way around the circle and make sure you leave a bit of a tail from when you started. And then once we get all the way around, we'll have the other piece and we can pull on those two to gather our circle around 
RCV. Yes, I just poked my finger with the needle. And again, it doesn't have to be real neat, but it is pretty key that the stitches are fairly close together so that when we gather it, there's no big gaping holes inside. You'll see, you'll understand when I get to that point, but try to keep your stitches about a quarter of an inch. Just keep going. The nice thing about making these is you can use whatever material you have. I mean, scrap material or whatever, it's great a great scrap buster. Um, this is also really good for people who have um, arthritis. Um, if you have trouble holding on to cards for too long, you know, you're holding those cards in your hand and your fingers start cramping up on you, this is a really great project for that because you can put the cards in the card holder and they're in there nice and snug and they're not going to slip around. All right, so I've made it all the way around, so I'm just going to cut my needle, my thread, and take my needle out. So now that we have our thread all the way around, we're going to turn it so that the right side is facing down, so the pretty side's facing down. Get those threads out of there. And you're going to take one piece of your batting, and you're going to center it in the middle of the circle. Keep your threads on the outside. Take your CD, and I put, if you have a, a picture, pattern, whatever on it, I'd like to put that down, just so that the batting, again, I don't think it really matters, but that's what I do. And then what I do is I just center my CD on top of the batting and just put two fingers on it, grab your strings, and just pull, and it cinches that circle. So when you look at the front, it's nice and smooth, got a very nice edge to it. So now all we need to do is to tie a knot in here to hold that so that it's not going to come up. Now you want to pull it fairly snug but be careful you don't want to pull it too tight or you're going to end up breaking your thread and then you'll have to start all over. And now we need to tie a knot which is always fun when you only have two hands. So if you have someone who can come along and put their finger on that for you, if not it can be done, just takes a little bit of finagling. All right, so I just put three or four knots in there. I want to make sure that that's not going to come apart. And then I'm just going to snip, not right close, but leave probably about a quarter of an inch little threads just so that it's not going to come undone. And there, that is the first one that's done. So I'm going to go ahead and repeat the same process for the second one, and I will be right back. All right, so I am back and I have both of my CDs all covered with the batting and the material all ready to go. The next step is to sew our buttons on. Try to get a button that is bigger than the center hole of the CD, just so that it's not going to pull through. You want something that's going to be fairly firm. Sorry, you're going to want the button to be big enough so that it's going to catch the lip and it'll make these fairly firm. You don't want the buttons small enough that they'll pull through. Okay, so now, you again, you're gonna need a needle and thread. I have a double strand with a knot on the, on the bottom. And I'm just going to pull my thread through one of these, of the CDs. And I just like to take my end of the thread where the knot is and just separate it and put my needle through there just to kind of lock it in place, okay? And then I'm just going to come up through the front and go through my button. And it doesn't matter whether your button is a two hole or a four hole, it, it really, it doesn't matter. And you can have what other, whatever color thread you want. I'm just using a white, okay, so I have my button on this one. I've gone through two of the holes, come out the back, and now I'm going to take my other CD and I'm going to go up through the center, 
put my other button on and make sure it's centered. So you can kind of feel with your finger where the button is and where the hole is. And then just go back down through and through to the other side where your button is. Now, once you get this first part done, the rest is easy. It's just trying to get everything all lined up. <clears throat> so now I've got my button on either side. I've got one thread so far holding it in place and I'm making sure that my CDs are lined up on the edge so that they're nice and straight. And if you have your buttons going through the very center, it should line up really good. And now I'm just going to sew my buttons on. Now what I try to do is line up my buttonholes the same on both sides. <clears throat> How I do that is I just take my needle and go through the one side and align my button on the other side so that they're both lined up and I just hold my fingers on either side and then I can just start sewing this button on and it should be fairly simple just if you've ever sewn a button on a shirt or a pair of jeans then this is no different all right so now somehow I've got my buttons all cockeyed there we go now when you're doing this once you get a few in there kind of give it a little tug you want this buttons to be snug in there. You don't want any gap because those buttons are what's going to keep your CDs in place so they don't flop around when you put the cards in. Okay, careful you don't pull too hard and break your thread but fairly, fairly snug. And then just sew your buttons on. So because mine has four holes I'm just going to go through each of them about three or four times. I want this fairly snug secure so it's not going to pop off and a few more here just get that nice and snug now when we get this sewn on we need to put some sort of a little knot in here if you want, there's two ways you can do it. And I've done it both ways and both ways work. All right, I think that's fairly good. It's, see how it's snug, it's not gonna pull apart. So all I'm going to do now, there's two ways that you can knot your threads. You can go under the threads and push your needle through and just knot it that way. So I'll show you that and put your thread through the loop and then give it a tug. Now if you're doing it this way I suggest at least two, two knots on under the thread just so that my buttons have a little bit of a ridge. There we go. So it's making it a little bit difficult for me to get my needle under the thread and over those ridges. Again, I'm going to just go through the loop and pull it snug. And then I'm going to take my needle and I'm going to go through, back through to the other side. And then I would do the exact same thing here. So I would go under the threads and pull your needle through and go through the loop. And again, one more time. So that's one method to do this. There's another way you can do this if, depending on how big your buttons are. <laughs> okay, so I have that snug in there. Now at this point, what I would do is I would snip it off and then this is where I would put my glue or my fray check on there on both sides so that those little knots don't come unglued. So the, but I want to show you the other way. So. If you take your needle and go through to the other side, so go through the center, the hole on the button, go through the center hole through the middle of the CDs and wiggle your way so that, and this is where it's kind of tricky, so you bring your needle out underneath of the button. 
not through the holes, but under the button, okay? So then, get that pushed through there, and then what I like to do is, if you're using this method, is kind of wrap it around, make a loop, take your needle and put your thread through that loop, and pull it, and as you pull it, it's gonna go underneath the button and create like a, a knot under there. And I would do that at least twice, if not three times. And again, you would do this on both sides. So I'm just, being as I'm doing it, I might as well, this button will never come off of this CD. <laughs> Cause it's double knotted everywhere. Okay, so then now that I've got this side done, I would go underneath the button, under the button, through the hole, and out the other side. If I can get, there we go. So there's my needle coming through. I don't know if you can see that coming through. And so then I'm gonna repeat that same process on this side. I'm just gonna make a loop. So go around your button, keep the, a loop there, put your needle through, and give it a little tug. And I'm gonna do that two more times just to make sure this button will not come off. And again, you don't need to do both of these knots. You can either do the top ones or the ones underneath. You don't need to do both. I just thought I'd show you both ways of doing this. So once that's knotted, then what I do if you're doing that method is I just take my needle and I just kind of go back through to the other side and trim my thread from the other side. It just leaves a little bit of thread so that if those knots were to come undone, you've got a little bit of thread. It's gonna be a lot harder for them to come undone. So now this is all done, it's all ready to go. So I'm just gonna move my needle out of the way. So now I'm gonna take my fray check and whether, it doesn't matter which method you use, I would still put some glue or some fray check on your threads just to kind of hold them in place. Doesn't have to be a whole bunch, just enough to catch those knots if you've done the knots on the top or just enough to keep the, the threads um, from loosening. All right, so that's it. Your CD card holder is now complete. So I brought a deck of cards down here, so I'll show you how this is gonna work. Here, let me get some cards out. So if you've ever played Canasta, you know you end up with a whole mitt full of cards. And for me, after playing for so long, my fingers start cramping up. So that's where this CD card holder comes into play. You can take your cards and place them in here. The nice thing about this is they don't slide around. They just sit where you put them. You can rearrange your cards. You can do all of this stuff and it doesn't, they don't move. They just sit here, okay? So now you can organize your cards, you can do whatever and you don't have to worry about your fingers cramping because you have this. The nice thing is, if you need to get up and leave the table for whatever reason, put your cards down, walk away, you come back, you pick it up and you're ready to go. You don't have to reorganize and resort your cards and all of that stuff. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you'll give these a try. They're a quick and easy little project and no sewing machine required. So. Happy crafting, everybody, and we'll talk to you soon. Bye for now.